so disempowered. I was like, well, what did, how come nobody taught me my own language? How come I had to be um, exiled from my own country? How come nobody was advocating for me? And I think it was the um, losing my own language and my own connection. I didn't want to be an advocate. I didn't want to be doing all this. It just happened. I love the energy of young people. I had lost that connection. Um, young people can do anything. They think they're going to be the next whatever big star. Oh, excellent. All the things I had to learn since 81, all the things I've been collecting, now reusing it and now being able to teach it to the younger generation, it's wonderful. You're starving for this knowledge. You're so hungry that you can't get enough. You're, you just want to learn and you can't learn fast enough. It provides them with so much pride and, and strength. Honestly, I didn't think when I started in 2007, traveling to Europe, that there would be any possibility ever educating seven billion people just by myself. And I, I didn't know how to, how to go about it, I just did it. But then with Angry Inuk, we are like reaching thousands and thousands of people. The feel is very easy to uh, exploit as an image. I've never really met these anti-sealers face to face. And I have some questions. We have to stop the cultural prejudice that is imposed on us. You have to listen to the people who have been the guardians of this earth. A year ago, I would have said, there's no way in my lifetime that I will see any, any change, any big changes at all. But with this um, documentary, it's really opening up dialogue. It's really questioning. How, how could so many people, so many million and billion people, so blindsided and just accept whatever was being given, fed to them? It is wonderful. It's a lot of work. It's really exhausting, but it's every, sec every second is worth it. One of my sons was complaining to me that I was always working, I was always going to school, and now I'm always my grandchildren try to get the number of days that I'm going to be gone so I can be with them again. I feel bad about it. But I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing all this for Inuit. And I don't think I could do it any other way because my life has always been torn away, going away, um, being the bridge in between. Um, two cultures always. Yeah. I don't think I know how to live any other way. <laughs> In the Inuit world, what I had learned, what I learned is it's never about you. It's about the community, it's about sharing. It's uh, very kind and very gentle, and very welcoming, lots of laughter, we laugh a lot. Um, I'd much rather be with the Inuit community. Yeah. I feel much more home.